And for more analysis now, let's go to Peter Matthews. He's a professor of political science at Cypress College in Los Angeles. Peter, Tim Kaine and Mike Pence debated on a wide range of issues, from taxes to leaked emails to Syrian refugees. How did the candidates do, and who, in your opinion, won this debate? Well, I think they were both very strong in different ways. But Pence overall probably was called the winner because he was very calm and collected despite attacks against his presidential nominee, Trump, by Cain in a very vigorous way. Cain was actually over-talking. He was interrupting Pence. He was interrupting the moderator. And yet Pence was pretty calm and cool about it. But on the, pro the other point is that Pence was very strong on foreign policy, even more than Cain was, I thought, because Pence had knew his issues about the U.S.-Russian uh, relationship as well as what was going on in Crimea and the Ukraine, and also, don't forget Syria, the tragedy going on there. And Pence uh, and, and Kane could agree on one thing, is that there should be those safe zones, of course. Uh, other things that I would talk about is the issues, the economic issues of jobs. The two men had distinct approaches to the jobs and the economy, which reflected their party of traditional approaches, because the jobs issue, Pence said, could be solved by cutting taxes on business, deregulating business, and encouraging entrepreneurship to hire people. Whereas, on the other hand, Kane and uh, put forth Clinton's platform of investing in education through tuition-free education for families that make under $125,000 a year, $125,000 a year, and also in investing in infrastructural development, more infrastructure, public works jobs. So there were clear distinctions in how each side would do the economic development. One saying, let's cut taxes on business, encourage them to invest. The other saying that there has to be government and social investment as well through higher spending which includes closing loopholes, the Democratic side. So it was quite, the contrasts were quite good in foreign affairs as well. Now, I would like to ask uh, the question or point out that the United States has a very large defense budget already, $610 billion a year, which is equal to the next seven countries put together after them. After them. And yet uh, Pence and Trump want to raise defense spending. I would say it's much better to spend the money more wisely and not waste it on weapons that don't quite often don't work or are not needed and spend the money on soldiers, on uh, equipment and in, on treatment of, of veterans, for example. So that's where I think the Democratic side might have the upper hand, because people are saying, you know, what are we spending all this money for on defense, and what are we getting for it? Pence was really able to paint the Obama and, Clinton admi and Clinton's administration as Secretary of State as not understanding foreign policy well or, or weakening the country somewhat. Uh, I don't think that was a fair charge, but it might stick to some extent with some voters, especially Trump voters, who are very fearful of security outside and inside the country and worried about their job losses as well. Uh, Peter, how important is this debate? Since this campaign seems to be dominated by the presidential candidates, were people actually watching? And do voters in America care about who the next uh, U.S. vice president will be? Well, certainly it wouldn't match the audience from last uh, presidential debate, which was about 84 million people. Uh, maybe half that number perhaps today if we're lucky. but. It's because mostly the people who are gung-ho and excited about politics are watching the vice presidential debates, the political junkies, uh, not the uh, voters who haven't made up their minds yet, the ones that could be persuaded, not so much those folks. And yet, every bit counts these days because the election is fairly close. At this point, Trump is, is about three or four points behind Clinton in the nationwide polls, and the state-by-state -state polls in the swing states paint a closer picture, actually. And the swing states are what counts, which could throw the election and the electoral college to one side or the other. So even if a few million people were persuaded to watch and to change their mind one way or the other, that's very significant in this, this debate appearance. So it was very good that both sides were very strong on their appearance. I don't think anyone won. There was no knockout punches. And the polling uh, points will not be moved this time around at this point. It'll, it'll, I think you have to wait till this coming Sunday's presidential debate to see a real movement in the polls. And that was going to be my next question. What can we expect from uh, the next big event in the campaign trail, the second presidential debate on Sunday? Yes, it's going to be a bit unexpected because Trump has threatened to make it, uh, to bring up even more negative campaigning about the Clinton's personal life, uh, the scandals that there was that was going through in one, even while Bill Clinton was president. And this is a real negative approach to trying to tear down Hillary's support as opposed to building up his own support through his own platform and positive views of his own message. So we don't know if he's going to just stick to personal attacks only. It's 90 minutes long. So he might actually talk about some policy as well. But I think he's definitely going to bring up some negative attacks, personal attacks, which Clinton is probably going to be trying to be ready to defend against. 
And if she does a good job defending it and she stays calm, she'll have a good chance of actually winning the, the second debate as well. If she wins the second debate as she did win the first, it's going to really hurt Donald Trump quite a bit in the polls. So well, let's see what happens on Sunday, depending on Trump's approach in the debate. It's going to be up to Trump mainly as to what approach he's going to take, and that'll determine whether Clinton reacts a certain way or not, can stick to the issues, or has to counterattack on a personal level. The, the debate last week really degenerated into a lot of personal attacks on both sides. It's very unfortunate because America deserves a lot better. It is a real discussion of the issues, both domestic and foreign policy, and the whole world is watching as your network informs the world. All right. Thank you very much for that, Peter Matthews. My pleasure.